Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, June 28th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Stockheim, Germany. Xavier today wrote a diary lifting a little bit of curtain about how malware analysis is done sort of at scale. And the key here is really triage, basically finding the samples that are worthwhile to analyze further. So the two methods that Xavier is introducing here is one, a quick sort of tool chain to extract malicious files or files period from emails, then running them through, for example, some Yara rules and such to find interesting things. Secondly, a tool that I actually wasn't familiar with and uh, Xavier said he learned about this from Jim Glossing, another handler of us. And that tool is called Quickscope. Quickscope typically runs in a Docker container. And one of the big advantages is that first of all, it's customizable, but it also can deal with a wide range of uh, different files, executables for different operating systems, even like APK files and such unpack them and then run some basic static analysis against them in order again to do some simple signature matching and essentially figure out what's worthwhile analyzing further. My sort of quick take on some of the triage is also that one thing that I like to do is if it's just a random sample that I received in an email and it does already trigger signatures in common anti-malware tools, then typically it's less interesting to do sort of a complete analysis uh, on it. Of course, this may also depend a little bit on the context if the sample was involved in an actual compromise or if this is just something that you received in email but are pretty certain that it hasn't actually been executed yet. And then we got yet another variety of the Rohammer attack. This one comes from researchers at ETH Zurich. And the problem here is, well, uh, actually, let's first talk a little bit about a Rohammer. Rohammer means that if you keep reading a particular memory cell in modern uh, DRAM, sometimes uh, adjacent cells are flipping and that's essentially sort of an ultimate privilege escalation attack where you're able to use weakness in the hardware to alter memory that you're not supposed to be altered based on the permission system of the operating system which of course has no control over where this memory is exactly located. This new attack that uh, they're describing takes a little bit a different approach. Instead of continuously and very quickly reading memory, they are just accessing memory. Then they keep the particular memory row open. They remain accessing it, but they're not actually reading or writing anything, which leads to the charge in that memory area to uh, become lower because it's not being refreshed. And as a result, you get a row hammer like effect. Similar problem, it's essentially hardware based privilege escalation, which is totally out of the control of your operating system. Remains to be seen how much software, firmware and such is able to do in order to prevent some of these issues. But the fundamental issue that keeps coming up here is that we have these weaknesses, side channels in hardware that uh, sort of uh, puts in question a lot of the assumptions we are making in particular in modern sort of more virtualized environments uh, where a lot of processes with very different uh, privileges are sharing the same hardware. Well, and then let's talk a little bit about some of the patches released uh, recently. Dell released updates for the bias for the Latitude 5530 and the Precision 3570. It fixes one vulnerability, CVE 2023-28073, categorized as high and essentially a privilege escalation of vulnerability. And Google released an update for Chrome, fixing a total of four different vulnerabilities, actually four fixes as Google Chrome puts it. Three of them are rated high. The fourth one is just described as various fixes from internal audits. As usual, make sure that you exit your Chrome browser once a day to help it update itself and maybe double check that it is actually up to date. 
Well, that is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.